Hey guys, welcome back. So now it's been a long time since we've done a Black Panther video. And with Black Panther getting so much love this past week between What If and the Marvel's Avengers game, like, I, I was like, man, I want to do another Black Panther video. But also with doing so, first things first, we have got to finish the intergalactic empire of Wakanda. And because of where we left off, there were like five issues left, which in this case, I want to cover over the course of two videos. Because in my opinion, there's quite a few things in those last five issues, which are just parts of the story that stretched out to like 20 pages over five issues, which could have been just two pages. And I mean, I'm just saying. But with that being said, let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch your spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so where we had left off many moons ago, it had pretty much been at the cliffhanger where Emperor Njaka, whose consciousness had survived through his symbiote, but with stowing away and making his way to Earth, he had soon after taken over the body of Shangamire and then recruited Zenzi and Tetsu in order to do a ceremony to reanimate and then take over the body of the deceased Eric Killmonger. To where from there, the plan was then to take over Wakanda Prime, but first thing was first, he needed to reclaim a full-time actual body. But from where we left off before, this resurrection slash possession, it was successful, and in some ways a little too successful. But we'll get into how and what exactly that means as we make our way through this. But with the resurrection being complete, your Killmonger symbiote, which is what I'll just call him for the sake of this video, but with the resurrection being complete, also keep in mind that back at the time, with help, he had also gained access to the gate, which had allowed ships from his galactic empire to make their way here and protect him during the resurrection ceremony. And with this being more than enough to hold off to Chala, Okoye, M'Baku, and, and that's future M'Baku, gotta say that. But with just only a few of them coming here to stop the ceremony, just a few of them alone, they couldn't stop N'Jaka, with him now having his ship and a portion of his army here. And because of that, to Chala and the others, they had to leave and regroup, and N'Jaka, who is now like your Killmonger symbiote, he had then also left from here to go to his Imperial flagship. But also what this did with both Wakanda Prime and Emperor Njaka having access to the gate, like this had then led to like your battleship standoff between the Maroons who are alongside with Wakanda Prime and them trying to keep your Killmonger symbiote from bringing in more backup through the gate from his empire to invade Wakanda Prime. But on the other hand with T'Challa, it's here where he went back to his lab, and it's here where him and his sister Shuri had made preparations for him to travel into the Jalia in order to execute their plan of seeking help from the elders so that they could restore the memory of everyone from the intergalactic empire. But of course, with doing this, it wasn't like just a walk in the park, and on his arrival, his father T'Chaka, he let T'Challa know that if he wanted the help of the ancestors, then he would have to go through a trial of a sense in order to earn it. But even with this being the case, a lot of times I see in the comments where some of you guys are like, well, why don't the ancestors just help? Rather than making T'Challa work for it every time this happens. But really, I think just to put it in the simplest way, it's really like this form of testing, if you will. It's really more of a way for those who have came and passed before T'Challa to make him stronger so that he's the best version of himself for his people. But we'll get back to that shortly because it's here in the case of N'Jaka who's still in this standoff up in space because in the meantime with the Maroons having the upper hand on the gate he has now sent what forces he has at the moment to attack the Maroons moon base so that with overthrowing them he can take full access to the gate and bring his empire to this earth to overthrow it. But then it's okay, so it's also here I want to get into the conflict of what's going on with this resurrection. Because with N'Jaka who survived through his symbiote, when he resurrected Eric Killmonger, this had fully brought back Eric Killmonger. And N'Jaka thought that he could just bond with Eric Killmonger's physical body and push him out, but that didn't work. And at the least he would just take Killmonger's memories, but even still N'Jaka's expectations were that there would be one consciousness in that body with the possession of the symbiote. But of course that didn't work out, so now here the two of them are at odds about who should really take the lead. But then also when N'Jaka tells Eric that it's getting warm in their ship, which he told him a few times like something just wasn't right. But when he says it again, the Maroons then fire on his Imperial flagship to where then he just gives the order for all of his men to fire on their ships and just blow the Maroons to pieces, which initially destroys one ship but it is then here where we see what Wakanda Prime and the Maroons have been working on in the background which is actually storm tapping into the different fields of energy and all the different microclimates in space to where she then reaches in their ships and cuts off their oxygen and it takes her a while to build up to it but even still it's Omega level and really like with seeing this like I wish we would get more of these moments of storm in space because the last time that I can think of like just off the top of my head was way back when we talked about like Black Panther versus the Silver Surfer and 
Galactus. But also like even seeing this, like one of the things we also know, and it's even something that Njaka mentioned at one point in the series, is that even with Storm being this powerful, with her being able to manipulate elements of weather, anywhere but even that is still restricted by the limits of her fatigue and with Njaka going against the Maroons and attempting to seize Wakanda Prime that's also something that he was kind of waiting for but even with anticipating it like he was hoping he wouldn't have to get to that part but with him expecting it to happen at some point he also knew that whatever great feat that she would do she wouldn't be able to sustain for a long time but with Eric suffocating, Njaka just bonds back to him and it's here where they more or less just settle their differences and they make the agreement that they'll just work together because they need each other to at least get through this. But with the two of them getting back to their feet, they then call for more ships to return from the Empire, which is one of the things Njaka was waiting for, but again he only wanted to do it after Storm made her big move. Because also, before the moon base was taken down, after Storm was spent, his plan was also then to just drip feed in backup until they can completely take over the gate. But then when he calls in for his backup, Nakia and the one from the Maroons that was from the Intergalactic Empire. That Nakia. She then barrels through all the ships that Njaka had called in for backup and with doing this she then sacrifices her life in order to give the Maroons a chance and not just get ridiculously overwhelmed. And even with seeing this like at this part there was a whole lot more backstory about Nakia and really aside from like the love interest with the T'Challa stuff we talked about before but there then after that there was more backstory kind of leading up to her giving a sacrifice and even with seeing it like it's stuff that you can tell is just there for a dramatic effect but with just talking about everything like in this video I decided to leave it out because also I noticed like with people who I talked to about this series about the whole intergalactic empire Wakanda it's stories like these and flashbacks like these that I often hear people say that it throws them off and it makes the story as a whole just hard harder to follow with so many flashbacks happening within like three or four issues. But then it's here where we go back over to T'Challa and with him in the Jalia and essentially asking his ancestors to restore everyone's memories, the test that they put him through in order to prove himself, to get a bit more specific here, it's really more of the case of him enduring what he's about to throw on everyone else. Because like we talked about before, T'Challa at this point, he's already got his memories restored. But before he's given the power to restore the memories of all his people, he has to face those parts of his memory that he fears. He has to face what rage drove him to. He has to face his actions that he's not proud of because once his people get their memories back, quite a few are going to remember things that they didn't want to remember. But with going into these trials and T'Challa being shown himself in a number of different memories, the ancestors take him back to Hickman's new Avengers. Because at the time when they were dealing with the incursion and the heroes had to decide who's going to destroy this other world in order to save their own or more so decide who's going to set off the bomb because <laughs> the decision was made. But with T'Challa stepping up and saying I'll do it, when it came down to this time he hesitated. Which I mean makes sense because you got to kill a world of innocent people in order to save your own. But in the case of his ancestors to whom their only priority is the living people of Wakanda and the future of Wakanda. So in this moment where T'Challa hesitated to save Wakanda, it was frowned upon because he didn't consider his people without hesitation. And in this moment, T'Challa has to face this in emphasizing on the fact that in that moment, with nothing else considered, just in that moment, he had thought of not putting his people first. But then on top of that, it's here with his grandfather Azuri. He hears T'Challa out with the idea of him keeping his oath and ultimately wanting to protect his people. And with saying that, it is then here where Azuri asks T'Challa, well, what about your other oaths? like the oath of marriage and so now for this one this one's really messed up because in this case he chose wakanda because back when he was married to storm and they had went up against each other within avengers versus x-men and i got that video linked down below but back at the time when he had chose wakanda this had put him at odds with his own marriage so in this case either way whatever decision he would have made a vow that he had made would have been broken but once again, like with the ancestors making him relive these moments, like I can't stress enough, they're not just putting him through it just for the sake of giving him a hard time. And really it's here where his birth mother, Inyami, she steps in and she tells T'Challa how his father, T'Chaka, he had to face himself in a very similar way when she had died. And even with him dealing with that pain and that grief, he still had to lead a nation. But with this happening, I like the use of Inyami stepping in and telling T'Challa, like it's not just you, everybody gets it hard like this. Because the ancestors, they legit told T'Challa like we're not your friends we're not your enemies 
were your ancestors. Because once again, making sure the leader is the best version of himself in order to preserve the people of Wakanda, which also include wherever that may expand to the stars and beyond, that's all they care about. Because ultimately, the survival and progression of their people is everything. And without Wakanda living and thriving and moving forward, the ancestors are nothing but a memory. And it's because of that for T'Challa when he endures this close up zoomed in reflection of his life and himself and his memories and his decisions, he embraces every decision, every hesitation, every mistake because ultimately they make him who he is and who he is is the king. And it's a pretty big deal that he looks at these moments that he looks at himself and still says that because had he been anyone else and looked at himself and said look I'm not worthy then he would have legit failed to where he likely would have got rejected by the ancestors again and from there the empire of Wakanda would just go on in whatever state it would have been until the day that a better king would have came along. But in this case T'Challa passes his test and he orders the ancestors to restore the memories of everyone from Wakanda to where at his command they do exactly that. But even with this taking place, keep in mind that even the intergalactic empire of Wakanda, though it's under the rule of N'Jaka, it was established after Secret Wars by T'Challa. And even though he sent the Alpha Flight ship into space to where it went 2000 years into the past, to where from there it expanded and conquered other worlds when N'Jaka overthrew the most recent king. But with it now today being a 2000 year old advanced empire to where now Wakanda, it all also includes different alien species whether they stand with the Empire or whether they stand with the Maroons, every last one of them gets their memory back. And with the way that N'Jaka's Empire was set up, with wiping memories and recycling oppressors, a ton of his men then turned on each other, once they realized what they had done to one another and each other's families, to where one of these guys, like they murdered his family and they made him watch. So now all those memories have just come back like a flood. And because of that, N'Jaka's men, they then start to just randomly slaughter each other. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right. Later.